It's not just radio, it's Rockland World Radio. RocklandWorldRadio.com Welcome to Sober University, your next step to successful recovery. With Cheryl Adler, who says, if you are going to crave anything, crave living life to the fullest. Maximize all you have and squander nothing. This program provides information to help you get your physical, mental, and spiritual house in order. And now, the host of Sober University, Cheryl Adler. Hello, Rockland World Radio listeners. Tonight, I have a guest who is going to enhance your sober lifestyle by sharing her knowledge and enthusiasm about the great benefits of yoga, meditation, and massage. Please join us in our chat room at rocklandworldradio.com or call us at 845-353-2910. Your participation makes the show all the more dynamic and fun. Welcome to Betsy Siva, co-director of the Birchwood Center located at 85 South Broadway, South Nyack, New York. The phone number at the Birchwood Center is 845-358-6409, and the website is birchwoodcenter.com, where you can find information about class schedules, workshops, events, gift certificates, yoga teacher trainings, and meditation. I have to share on a personal note that the atmosphere at Birchwood is so soothing and calming that once you cross the threshold of the front door and ascend the steps to the studios, you will feel your stress melt away. There is such a gentle calm at Birchwood and a most supportive environment waiting for you. It's a place that invites you to, to connect with the peace that's already inside you. Betsy, hello, welcome to the show. Thank you, Cheryl. It's great to have you here. And as I say, almost every week, the half hour flies by. So let me first start by asking you <clears throat> how you became a yoga teacher. What drew you to yoga? And who were some of the influential people in your own life, and how did they impact you as a person and your choice to commit to the, the field, the profession of yoga? Well, I started studying yoga in like 1975, and that was just, um, just something to do for me as a dancer to warm up, and it wasn't a very serious episode for me with yoga, but it planted a seed. So you started out as a dancer? Uh, yeah. I was a modern dancer. Wonderful. I guess I still am. Uh -huh. and um, You are? Yeah. But I'm more of a yogi now. Um, so I started just taking a yoga class a week in the 70s, and I would use yoga to warm up for performances and stuff like that. But when I was in San Francisco in 1984 and I was dancing there, I met a yogi, Sri Brahmananda Saraswati, who actually has an ashram in Monroe, New York. And he became my guru, and I started studying meditation, mantra, uh, yoga philosophy with him. I didn't do asana with him. It was... Um, Explain that to our listeners who may not quite know the language. Well, asana is the movement form. The physical That's the postures. Yeah. Yes. And yoga is a very broad subject. The postures that we mostly focus on in the West mm -hmm. is just a small part of yoga, but we've made it into all of yoga pretty much here. Mm -hmm. But um, so I started uh, studying the yoga philosophy, the mantra chanting, meditation with Sri Brahmananda, um, and it you know, that pretty much changed my life. I'd always, I have always all my life been looking for kind of a spiritual practice that was kind of beyond the dogma of Catholicism that I was brought up in. I just, um, I wanted something more freeing than that. So this really worked for me because yoga is not a religion. It's a, it's a spiritual practice. It opens 
opens you up to your spirituality or to the spirit that's living in your body. That's so a good distinction. Yeah. Uh-huh. So uh, when I moved back to the East Coast in 1990, a friend of mine took me here to Nyack to Paula Heitzner. Ah, who, I know Paula Heitzner. Yeah, yeah, Hello, she, Paula. Yeah. And that also was life-altering. Yes. So then I started studying the postures with Paula. Mm -hmm. And um, because I was a dancer, it came easy, although it was was a good transition. The postures were very hard for me because Mm -hmm. it was all about stillness instead of moving a lot. And um, it was great. And I started subbing for Paula now and then. So That's a, I officially quite an honor. Yeah. Uh-huh. I officially she said to me, I said, Well, I don't know what to teach. And she said, Well, as long as you're breathing with it, it's yoga. <laughs> so it's a good criteria. Yeah. Just breathe with right, it. Right, just breathe with it. Do uh-huh. whatever you want. So I I officially started teaching yoga in nineteen ninety two in my apartment in Upper Nyack. Uh-huh. And after that, uh, you know, I started with a couple of classes, a couple of students, and after a year or two, it grew, and we moved, my partner and I moved to 85 South Broadway and opened the center, and that's grown, and now it's pretty huge, and we have classes seven days a week from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. In fact, I would like to segue into showing anybody who has the visual while we're talking. This is the schedule of the Birchwood Center, And this is something that you can find right outside the front door of the Birchwood Center. And it shows all the classes Monday through Sunday, all day into the night. And you can find this on the website as well. It's it's really a wonderful schedule because the range of classes really attract people who are of all ages and at stages, whether they are young and very agile, or older and have arthritis or bone density issues, and I would Mm -hmm. love you to perhaps describe a few of your key classes. Well, um, we have classes for everybody. We have classes for children, teens, young people, you know, all ages. We've had 90 year olds in the in the gentle yoga classes and at the same time teens with them in the gentle yoga classes so the gentle yoga classes are pretty big they're pretty popular because it's a very meditative um, practice although you work hard Mm -hmm. but there's a lot of stillness a lot of pausing a lot of feeling we have classes that are a lot more vigorous for people who really want to work out and want to sweat a lot. We have prenatal classes. Um, we have a class that's really great called Yoga 101 for Everybody. Uh-huh. So that gives you the fundamentals of yoga. Um, we have a lot of advanced yogis, everybody. And the thing about yoga is you don't have, everyone, everybody can do yoga. But you don't have to be flexible to do yoga. You get flexible doing yoga. You grow into the flexibility. You grow into it. There's no right or wrong way to do it. There is a right way, but there's not an only way. Yes. We we are very, you know, we trained to offer people modifications. You know, in, in the poses, there are a lot of different ways to do it for the limitations that people might have. We have um, classes for special needs people. We have a lot of people that are suffering from, you know, things like Parkinson's. Uh, We have a lot of people in recovery from surgery, uh, heart. MS. MS, absolutely. Um, A lot of people recovering from, like, open heart surgery. So the gentle yoga really addresses all those things. It's it's just wonderful. And I, I would like to say, as a student, at Birchwood for many years, and uh, as Judith Rose's student of Vital Movement, which is a remarkable class that has lots of yoga in Mm -hmm. it and lots of very intelligent stretching and um, gives you a great feeling of accomplishment. There is no competitiveness that we see in the world of sports. 
and I'm not against competition because I happen to be a great football fan. But when it comes to the study of yoga, it's really about your own personal growth. And so you're, you're not really looking over at what somebody else is doing on their mat. You're really focusing on what's going on within yourself. Right. And I, I think that that should be a, a real attraction for people is that mm -hmm. it just has to do with your experience in that moment. Yeah. And you use a word that I really want to invite my listeners to meditate on because people who are addicts, who are in recovery, are often very anxious and very agitated, very hyped up. Mm -hmm. And you used a beautiful world, word, the word stillness. Yeah. And in our culture where everything is now, 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 zoom, mm -hmm. zoom, zoom, mm -hmm. fast food, fast food, this, fast that, speeding down the road. We, I talked about road rage the other week. Um, the idea of stillness, just the word, to say the word, stillness. Well, that's what yoga is about. Uh, really, when you come into the studio, you'll notice as you walk up the stairs that there's a whole different feeling that just gets deeper and deeper as you ascend the steps. Exactly. It's a very peaceful place because everyone who is coming to classes, they're all going into that state of stillness. Mm -hmm. So it's in the air. It stays there. So when you enter, it's almost like you just want to go, ah, and relax. And we do. And, it, you know, for the classes, what one of the things that I really believe in is that how we live our lives is we never have a moment to reflect on what just happened. That's you know, right. we're always rushing from one event to the next event without even a thought about what I, what we just did. What, you know, yeah. so what I try to do in yoga classes, we'll do a series of postures, some breathing exercise, and then just sit and feel and reflect on that experience. It's kind of like feel the effects of the actions that you just took, Wonderful. which is what yoga talks about karma, which is every action has a reaction, Yes. right? It can be a good action with a good reaction, a bad action with a bad reaction, but we can directly experience that in a yoga class when you do some postures, pause and feel what is the effect? What happened? What What is the um, action from what is the reaction from that action, which was definitely an action, it was a pose, you know. So yoga is really healing in that way, and it, it takes you into a quiet place inside. I always call it like the uh, quiet room inside or the inner sanctuary where you can just feel who you are. Which mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are very disconnected from. Yeah. So the yoga experience really helps people to become in touch, maybe for the first time in their life, with emotions, with feelings, mm -hmm. with self-awareness, with connecting to your body, not being separated from your body, but really being in your body. And I myself can share that there have been times in taking yoga that a memory or an emotion will surface that we would say is stored in the memory of your cells mm -hmm. and it that becomes food for thought that that yeah. becomes something to really help you work with it, you can recover a memory you can hopefully resolve certain things and of course it helps your body become very strong I think that yoga can be clearing. Yes. It brings those things up to the light. You can look at them. Mm -hmm. You might not get rid of whatever that is, mm -hmm. but it's brought forward so you can examine it. Yoga is the science of self-examination, mm -hmm. of looking inside to find out who is living in our bodies. Um, Yoga is truly, really the purpose of yoga is to relieve suffering. That's the whole purpose of the practice of yoga. And the science of yoga offers you all these tools to do that, which is postures, 
breathing exercises, concentration, meditation, self-awareness, all of those things. Um, and that's where you go on your mat. And everyone, like you said, it's not a competition. You're not competing with yourself either. No. So we try to, it's hard not to do that. It's hard not to do that because posture, yoga is, the posture part of yoga is very fun. Yes, you it is. You get to do all these great things with your body. It, it helps you to feel a lot of self-esteem, a lot of strength in your body. You start to feel very balanced and strong. And flexible. And flexible. Like Gumby. So it feels really good. Yes. And sometimes you want more of that. But yes. it's really about being okay with what it is today. Yeah, so there's self-acceptance, yeah. yeah. which I think is also very much part of the 12-step program exactly. for recovery is um, a deep self-acceptance, right. saying the serenity prayer, knowing what you mm -hmm. can change and what you cannot change, and the wisdom to know the difference. So right. I think that is uh, an integral part of yoga. And it's true, because when you are working your body, you see that you know, I was born with an Irish-Italian body. You were born with, I don't know what kind <laughs> I'm of a body. Jewish you know, body. All, all the bodies are th constructed in a different That's way. Right. My body's very strong, but it, it's not all that flexible. I have to accept that. Mm -hmm. Then if I look at someone else who's very long and stretchy, I mm -hmm. could get envious. Of course. Or I can just be fine with my uh, yes. strengths, mm -hmm. you know, so... We have to, you know, it's all about that inner reflection and acceptance of ourselves. So it's teaching that. It teaches that with every move. Exactly. Um, but really, it's not all about postures. It's really, if there were a goal, it's about getting still and feeling who is living in the body. The problem with our, our mind is that we begin to think we are our body in our mind and we forget that the spirit that's living in the body is just expressing through the body and mind. I think that's a, a bit of an abstract concept for some people. Uh, let's try to break that down for our listeners a little bit. Okay, um, I think that most people can feel mm -hmm. there is an I I'm talking about there's a Betsy in me yes. that has never changed since my first awareness of myself. It's always been me. Okay. But my body has changed. Of course. I've learned different things. I've gone through things in my mind, in my life. But that I that has not changed is the spirit that's living in my body. And how, how would you describe the spirit in, in a way that people who are listening can say, okay, this is my spirit. It is not my body, and it is definitely not my mind, because my mind can so much interfere mm -hmm. with my spirit. Mm -hmm. How do we help the spirit really emerge? By getting very quiet, sitting, feeling, watching, listening. And again, for me, it's just feeling that unchanging I, the, the part of me that doesn't change. That's a, a very steady constant. Yeah. And must be very calming. For instance, I heard a story about um, a little old lady was walking down the street. And you know how you look in the windows of the stores and you see yourself? You know, you check yourself out. Sure. And she looked in the window, and she saw this little old lady walking by, and she said, but but that's, but it's still me. But it's me. But it's changed so much, you know? Because she, she saw herself. She saw herself as an old, old lady, but she said, but, but it's still me in there, uh -huh. right? So um, that's the only way I can explain it. It's the unchanging I that I have known since my first awareness of self that hasn't changed. So the little old lady who looks at that reflection may then be able to connect to her vivacious spirit and say that is the true me. Yeah. It doesn't have to do with the lines in my face, although those are stories that tell something mm -hmm. 
especially if we haven't bothered to have plastic surgery, they can remind <laughs> us of things that have happened that we should be remembering. Yeah. But the spirit it can be a very indomitable, hopefully, yeah. experience. Yeah. And I, I think for people in recovery, the spirit has been so dampened, if not in some people deadened, by the use of substances or behaviors or mood states that have really separated them from their spirit. Mm -hmm. So could you speak a little bit more about how someone in recovery for any addiction, whether it's a food addiction, a shopping addiction, alcoholism, drug addiction, gambling, whatever that thing is, how, how can the recovering addict come and study yoga and enhance their own recovery process? Well, part of it is that the body and mind are one system. You do not, you don't, you're not separated from your mind. Your body is not separated from your mind. It's all one system. And when you get strong in your body, when you stretch your body, when you make your body feel good, you feel better in your head. Yes, because you're producing happy chemicals. Yes. And when you get very still and you're having that opportunity to watch what your mind is doing. You become an observer. You become an observer. You watch your mind. What is it doing and what is it doing to you? So yoga is teaching that we have a body and a mind, but we are much more than that. We go beyond we that. We are beyond that. We have a body and a mind as a vehicle for the spirit to express itself. So yoga offers you that opportunity to stop, to feel, to watch, and observe. So let's see who's in the chat room. I mean, I can't, I, you know. Someone in the chat room says, <coughs> Layla, who says yoga is so healing, I'm going to check out this yoga center right now. Do you have hot yoga? We don't have hot yoga, but we can get you very hot. We <laughs> want that. <laughs> That's true. We have vinyasa <laughs> classes that are very vigorous, and you create your own body heat. And by the end of the, the class, the room is quite warm. Yes. Um, personally, I prefer to create my own heat. That way, I'm not overstretching my body because my muscles have gotten so loose and juicy from the heat from the outside. Or overstressing yeah. the whole body system from yeah. the heat. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't have hot yoga. I don't, I'm not against hot yoga, but we don't have that at Birchwood. But I think your answer was true. You'll create your own heat. Yeah. And and thank you for participating, Layla. We, we appreciate that. Yeah. Anybody else? That's it now. Okay. Uh, we still have a few minutes? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, okay, without breaking anyone's confidence, can you share a few success stories of how yoga changed someone's life and in what ways? Well, I, very simple ways and very dramatic ways. For instance, there's an elderly gentleman that started gentle yoga with me um, about three months ago, and he came in to me and said that his doctor took him off all of his high blood pr pressure medication. He doesn't need that anymore. That's remarkable. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, another lady, you know, she doesn't have asthma anymore. She's, you know. Breathing. Yeah, the uh -huh. breathing is good. Uh, women who do prenatal yoga with us have uh, reported how much easier the birthing process is. Stuff like that that's which is great. Um, I have had a couple of um, students who have said to me that when they had their heart attack, <laughs> yoga saved them, the yogic breathing saved them because mm. pretty much it's the fear when you're having a heart attack. I don't know, I haven't had a heart attack, but that's what they say, it's the fear that really kills you. But these two people said they started doing their breathing it got them through, and they're all just fine now. But I think for me, um, the real 
thing that works, that changes everybody's life is the breathing, is the pranayama. Because it carries over into your daily life off the mat. Once you learn how to do the yogic breathing, which is really easy, you just breathe really slowly and deeply and comfortably, um, it brings you more into a center place. I have found for me that my reactions have become less drastic, less swinging of the pendulum. The pendulum swings a lot small in a smaller arc. So that is something that pretty much everybody reports. They're like, yeah, I, I don't fly off the handle so much anymore. I mean, it's you a know, great mood stabilizer. Yeah, so it's stabilizing yeah. the mood. That's a great way to put it. Um, and I, I think it, for, for people in recovery, I think it helps to curb your cravings because you are really focused on getting centered and because your moods are stabilized, there's less urges that take over. Yeah, and it's not something that you have to work at. Yes. It just happens. It becomes very natural. Yeah. Yes. It, it, th that's what I love about yoga is that you just have to do it. It works. It does It work. works. It's, a, it's an ancient science. It's, you Thousands know. Thousands of years old. Yeah. And it's a scientific. In fact, science is proving the benefits of yoga now. Say uh, a little bit about that before we wrap up the show. Well, I, I'm not sure what to say about it. Okay. But I do know that, for instance, it is there are many studies that are validating the benefits of meditation. Yes. Doctors are now recommending yoga and meditation. People are coming into yoga saying, my doctor told me to come here. Whereas a while ago, you know, they would poo-poo that. It was too new agey. It was, you know, but now they're starting to see how it works and how it physiologically changes, changes. the body. Well, I, I will actually very humbly plug my own book right now to say that there are studies in my book with the Dalai Lama himself and other uh, Tibetan monks who were willing to get uh, plugged in and um, neurologically tested while in meditative states. And there is scientific evidence that shows just how profoundly it affects brain states and mood states mm -hmm. and physiological states. So I know we have to wrap up the show, but I think we could have spent hours discussing yoga. I think, really, we should just go back to the studio and practice it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, I want to just say that Birchwood offers free meditation. I believe it's on Friday mornings from 8.30 to 9.15. That might be a wonderful introduction to being in the studio and getting a feel for it. And one of the studios overlooks the Hudson River. And I can tell you when I'm in that class at night with the full moon, it's totally mm -hmm. magical. So it's also in beautiful the morning, in the morning. The sun is beaming in there. It's beautiful. Yes, yeah, so the sun is beaming, and that's beautiful too. So. I want to thank you so much for being with us tonight. Thank you, too. Oh, it's our pleasure, for sure. And uh, before we wrap up, are there any other people in the chat room? Um, Layla responds, great show. Thanks. You're very welcome, Layla. I also would like to say that last week we had a person in the chat room named Kim. And if Kim is listening, I just want to acknowledge, I'm so sorry I didn't comment last week, in regard to your higher power question, that whomever your higher power is, please stay connected to your higher power. So thank you for joining us this evening. Please remember that you can reach Betsy and her wonderful staff at birchwoodcenter.com or call directly at 845-358-6409. You can reach me at my private psychotherapy office at 845-358-4652. My website, soberuniversity.com, and you can always reach me here at my home away from home, rocklandworldradio.com. I'm looking forward to continuing our dialogue next week with more on sober living. 
And please remember, if you're going to crave anything, crave living life to the fullest, maximize all you have, and squander nothing. Thanks for being with us. Good night. It's not just radio, it's Rockland World Radio. Rockland World Radio. Rockland World Radio. Rockland World Radio.